young Israeli has other plans. The career path that would make Yora Epstein a master of jet combat was unconventional, even by Israeli standards. Initially rejected for flight training in 1956 due to a heart murmur, Epstein became a paratrooper instead. In 1963, he was finally accepted into pilot training and won his wings. Epstein soon made a name for himself while in fighter training. Every fighter pilot, both new and experienced, hones his combat skills through the practice dogfight. On one such flight, he's pitted against his squadron commander. Epstein accidentally goes into a spin. Now, I was a uh, free fall paratrooper, and I have about 500 uh, jumps at that time, so I feel in the air very comfortable. It, it didn't mean to mean anything the time I spin, because I made spins without uh, aeroplanes <laughs> very easily in the air. But Epstein's CO sees impending disaster. But he was getting panic, and he shouted at me, you are the right turn, no, left turn, no, right turn, left turn, do that and do this. At the end, I have to told him, please, shut up. You just make it harder for me. And I get out from this spin very easily, no problem at all. Epstein advances quickly into the Mirage 3. He is a natural-born aviator and gifted with such extraordinary eyesight that it's actually measured by radar. I can see fighters for 24 miles, when average pilot can see them between 8 to 12 miles. So I have an advantage. In all, all the dogfights that I took part, I see the airplane first. Hawkeye, as he's called by his fellow pilots, is now champing at the bit for a kill. Epstein is determined that the big Egyptian fighter hugging the ground in front of him will be his first. I went after this Sukhoi for a very long uh, chase. Epstein finally gets within cannon range, 1,200 feet. The pepper is on the target. He has visualized this moment for years. Epstein squeezes the trigger. Nothing happened. In his excitement, he's forgotten to engage the cannon arming switch. What I did, I, I hit circle breakers, and at that time I was 250 behind him, and I gave a very short breast, and the Sukhoi 7 has a huge engine, really huge. All the bullets go inside this uh, engine, and it was a tremendous explosion. And when he came out of the explosion, there is only wings and, and nose. And this little aeroplane that left make the, the smallest loop I ever seen in my life. And he was in the ground. Giora Epstein has realized his dream and scored his first kill. Six years later, he's at war again, pushing his fighting skills to the limit during one incredible day over the desert. It's Delta versus Delta in one of the most epic dogfights of the jet age. October 20th, 1973. The Yom Kippur War. Giora Epstein leads a four-ship of Delta Wing fighters to the Suez Canal. He's flying an Israeli-built Nesher, a copy of the French Mirage 5. Radar control has ordered Epstein, by now an experienced flight leader and double ace, to 20,000 feet. Egyptian aircraft have been picked up inbound. 
When we came to the canal, we didn't see anything. And he said that some, he sees something that comes from the south. So I look there, and I see a pair of MiG-21s come from the south. And when they are nearly facing us, a few miles, they turn to the west and start going to Egypt. Epstein and his flight are here. The MiG-21s here. the Israelis drop their tanks and give chase, going to full afterburn. In the lead, Epstein gets good tone from his heat-seeking missile. And at that time, the Kippur War, we have good missiles. We have the uh, Shafrir II and the M9D. So I launch the missile. and I got a hit, and the number two of this pair explodes and goes down. And immediately I went after the number one. But then, the desert below him comes alive with camouflaged airplanes. Like mushrooms came about 10 pairs of MiG-21s. The Egyptians have led the Israelis into an ambush. Giora Epstein is about to put the Nesher to the ultimate test. The 1973 Yom Kippur War marked the combat debut of a cousin to the Mirage III, the Nesher. The sleek Delta Wing fighter was born in the shadows of international espionage. By 1967, Israel needed new airplanes to boost its fleet of top-line Mirage III's. They worked with Dassault Aviation to design a simpler and less expensive Delta Wing fighter called the Mirage 5. Israel paid France for 50 airplanes. But on the eve of the Six-Day War, French President Charles de Gaulle imposed a total arms embargo on the Jewish state. Israel with the help of accomplices outside of France, obtained blueprints, which allowed them to build their own version of the Mirage 5. The Nesher, or Eagle, was first flown in September 1969. The Nesher was really a Mirage 3 that was optimized more toward the ground attack solution than the air-to-air -air combat. The characteristics of the Nesher slash Mirage 5 were more in the multi-mission mode versus air combat or intercept. Although the Mirage 3 was lighter and more agile, the Nesher carried nearly a thousand pounds more fuel without external tanks. The slight loss in maneuverability due to the extra weight was more than compensated for by the Nesher's longer legs and extended time on station. Attributes that would prove critical to Giora Epstein in his fight against a swarm of Russian-built MiG-21s. The MiG-21 was the standard daytime fighter of the Soviet bloc, the Mach 2-capable